Okay, so here it is as promised, a how to care for, store, and organize your fabric video. Um, I did this live previously on my Instagram, but then realized that like I couldn't save it and nobody could rewatch it. So um, we'll do a condensed version here. If you have questions, please feel free to send me a message and I'm willing to help. So I'm gonna show you kind of, these are my fabric cabinets. Um, basically all they are is cheap, like, $50 pantry cabinets from like Walmart or Target. Um, if I open it up, you can kind of see my fabric in there. Pretty neatly folded. The top is a mess. <laughs> this is the catch-all and it's also where I put my fleece and folding fleece, it kind of gets wonky because it gets really fat. So if you have fleece, you know, like when you fold it, it's just like exponentially ginormous. Um, these, I think... Um, I had to add an extra shelf if I remember correctly. So I got just a piece of like nice finished wood from Ace Hardware or somewhere and had them cut it and you can buy extra pegs. Um, super easy to do if you need more space. I don't recommend um, storing fabric on one shelf and having it go all the way up because it will bow the shelf. Um, fabric gets really heavy really quick. So make sure that you, if you need to add shelves, you want it to be smaller, that's fine. It works better that way so it's not, doesn't crush your shelf. Um, also, um, if you have these kind, the pegs I have are the flat kind, so you can turn the shelf over. So if you know your shelf is bowing a little, flip it over and put the fabric on it and it'll help bow it back the other direction so you don't kill your shelf. So, um, okay, so a couple things first. Um, storing fabric. So you want a place to store it that gets a little bit of air. So um, if you don't have that as an option, that's okay. Like if you have to store it in containers under your bed because that's all the space you have, do that air it out every once in a while because the fabric will get musty if it's closed off. I don't know why that is. Even new fabric will do that. Um, the other thing you can do is store it with, um, if you have to put it in a container, say under your bed, um, that's closed is get, uh, charcoal bags, little, the little charcoal bags. You can hang them in your closet. It helps keep the smell out. Those are great. You can throw those in there. Um, for this kind of storage, I always like one with doors, um, because it helps keep the dust out and the sunlight off. So even though I don't get necessarily direct sun from the one window that I have, a little bit of sun can fade your fabric and if you have open shelves and you have lots of windows you're definitely gonna get faded fabric so get doors or something okay um one of the cool things that you also can do that's super easy to do is cedar blocks so you can get these in the laundry aisle usually like where the ironing boards are not laundry detergent um i looked and a lot of places have them in like the sewing aisle like target has like sewing stuff and then ironing boards and hangers um these are for your closet you can put them in here too. It's a cedar block. They sell them in blocks. They sell them in little balls. They sell them in a big block with a hanger on it so you can hang it. Um, it will keep moths and bugs out of your fabric. The one thing is if you realize like it no longer smells like cedar because you'll smell it. Like it smells, <laughs> cedar has a very distinct woodsy smell. Um, if you can't smell it, the easiest way to do it is sand it, again, to resurface some of the oils or score it. And I'll do that. I'll take like a pair of scissors or a knife and I'll just ch -ch 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 in both directions, give it some score marks and it'll re kind of revamp it for a little bit. And these will last you quite a while. Um, I usually kind of just tuck one in the side of the fabric and I'll put one sometimes on each shelf. Um, it's a good way to help, again, keep some bugs out of there. You may not have bugs in your area, but I've definitely had fabrics I stored that I pulled out that had like holes in it. So moths apparently got into it. Um, the other thing is if you get musty fabric, so if you do have fabric that smells, do not store it with your other fabric. It will make the other fabric smell musty as well. And it's really hard to get out. So for example, um, I've had people gift me fabric, like, oh, I cleaned out my grandmother's attic or garage or whatever, or, Hey, like I found this stuff in my basement. Do you want it? Sure. I'll take it. But then if it smells bad, <laughs> don't put it in here. My recommendation for kind of smelly fabric, um, my friend, Karen, Hey, Karen taught me how to do this. So she basically said that you wash your clothes in vinegar. And so after doing some research, I realized that the best way to get the smell out of musty stuff is you have to, it's kind of a process. So you want to wash the fabric as hot as you can wash it with about a one cup of like white apple cider vinegar. Don't use detergent in that load, just the vinegar, pour it in, wash it as hot as you can wash it. Then you have to wash it second sometimes a third time but if you're trying to save this fabric so you can use it sometimes it's worth it and I know that seems like a lot of washing but we don't want the fabric to go to the landfill and if it's cool fabric you really want to get the smell out so the next wash after the vinegar wash is you want to do two tablespoons or a fourth of a cup maybe of baking soda and you'll put it in the fabric softener spot so like in my washing machine I've got the big you know in the middle and there's a cup in the middle for fabric softener 
you put the vinegar in there and then the next wash you put the baking soda in there. And then for that wash with the baking soda, you want to fill the rest with really hot water. Um, and so it'll kind of activate it and whatever vinegar's left, it'll bubble up. Then wash it again as hot as you can wash it. <laughs> and then if it still smells like vinegar, the last load you can do soap. Do whatever detergent you have. I recommend using something free and clear because it has no dyes, no scents, which means that it can, like if you, if you wash it with some of those things with like a smell, sometimes people are allergic to it. And if you're making stuff for sale, you don't want customers to get something and have like, oh, like I don't like the smell of this or they have an allergic reaction to it. Same thing with, that's why no smell, no, you know, dyes, no nothing. Um, because sometimes have people have sensitive skin. So like, um, my, uh, stepfather could only have stuff washed with Tide only because he was allergic to everything else. But then I know people who can't use Tide at all. So just find something free and clear. It doesn't matter what brand, but it'll say on it free and clear. So it has no dyes, no chemicals, no flour stuff. It's not smelly of any way. That's what I do. And then when you go to put it in the dryer, um, the other thing is don't use dryer sheets. And this was something else that my friend Karen taught me. It was like, cause our towels started to smell musty and they were new. And she said, part of what is happening is you're getting residue from dryer sheets and the dryer sheets put kind of a film and then stuff sticks to the film, which is why they smell. So you don't want to use it for the smelly fabric, even though it might refresh them. It's just masking the musty smell. You can get dryer balls. Um, they're about this big, like a tennis ball. It's a wool ball. They usually come in a set of three or four, um, and you just throw those in with your dry clothes, like your, your clothes to go in the dryer. And um, it will help keep them from being staticky. And then you don't have to use a dryer sheet. Um, you can get those at, I got mine at Ross. You can get them on Amazon. I'm sure Target, Walmart, places like that carry them. So you can get them anywhere. Use those. It'll help you with that. And then the other suggestion is for the smelly, if you're trying to get the smell out, instead of putting it in the dryer, if you can, hang them out somewhere to dry outside. Let the sun dry them because that will also help get the smell out. So we just hang ours all along the fence. I'm sure my neighbors are like, what is happening over there? Cause I've done it like two or three times. So like the whole upstairs deck railing just gets covered in fabric <laughs> and then it just dries out and then it helps. So I did a whole bag recently. Um, my good friend Summer gave me some stuff from her grandmother's uh, garage and it had kind of a musty smell and I did all those steps and now that fabric's fine. Um, but also while I was trying to get it clean, I did not store it in here. And if you're worried that it still might smell, even if you smell and it seems like, oh, it might be clean, don't store it in here if you're worried at all. If you get musty fabric and you do all the steps and you think it's clean, but you're still kind of like, oh, I don't know, it's fine. Don't store it in here. Store it in, um, in a plastic bag or in a Tupperware container somewhere else away from like your good new fabric. Cause if it is still musty at all, it will make this stuff smell and it's so hard to get out. And so you know, decide, decide what you want to do. I wouldn't do it. Um, but if the only place you have to store fabric is together, maybe put it in some kind of bag, like plastic bag and kind of wind the top and stick it like at the bottom. Um, that way it's still separated. Um, okay. So that's fabric care. <laughs> um, I also always pre-shrink my fabric. So, um, I've been asked this question actually from the last video that I did about fabric storage. Um, I don't use a lot of like other kinds of fabric besides cotton. So when I say I pre-shrink, I pre-shrink my cottons. I don't do silk. I don't do polyester a whole lot. I don't do a lot of other synthetic fabrics or things like that. Or sometimes I'll do some that's a blend. It'll be like a cotton polyester blend. I will pre-shrink those. Um, some of the stuff doesn't do well in the wash because I dry it hot and I, I wash it hot and dry it hot. Um, so it shrinks. And somebody asked me, why would I do that? Well, if you're making a product, so for example, if you guys um, follow me on Instagram, probably you've seen, I make bags and I make coffee sleeves and I make all kinds of things. So for example, <clears throat> this is, oh, hold on. I just dropped a needle on the floor. This is what happens when you have sewing stuff everywhere. I don't want to step on it and kill myself. <laughs> um, so I make bags like this. So this is my button bag. I have buttons in here for my coffee sleeves um, and it's got a liner. Okay. So the liner is a different fabric and the liner is kind of a heavy canvas and the outside's just obviously Cotton Mario Brothers. Um, if you don't pre-shrink your fabrics and you sew this together and you sell it to someone and they take it home and they wash it, they the fabrics could shrink at a different rate, causing it to warp and like not sit normal. Like right now, it sits pretty, it's a nice bag, but it could be like, 
you know, because the, the fabric shrinks one way and the inside fabric shrinks another way and then it'll pull your zipper or whatever. So I always pre-shrink stuff before I use it. I always wash it before I use it, pre-shrink it. Um, sometimes you'll get stuff that says it's pre-shrunk. I still wash hot, dry it on anyway because then I protect myself from later. I wash and then, oh my God, it's like a mess or whatever. So, um, but yeah, wash it hot, dry it hot. Um, if you're worried, um, sometimes your fabric will get, let me see if I can find one here. Um, your fabric will get strings on the end, right? When you put it through the machine, it'll kind of do this. You know, you'll get these little stringy things at the end. Um, if you are worried about that, because this fabric is a really decent woven cotton. By the way, check this fabric out. Golden Girls. I'm definitely going to make some of this stuff out of this later. But um, this is a really high quality fabric. This was a custom print from Spoonflower that I got. And it's like a, uh, like two steps up from like basic, I think. So it washed really well. But um, other fabrics like, oh, now I can't find one. <laughs> You'd think I could find some fabric in here with some strings on it. But, you know, the ends will get stringy. Um, if you're worried about that um, and you want to put it through the wash, because sometimes what will happen is it'll get real wadded up because all the strings will get stuck together, um, use pinking shears ahead of time and cut all the edges with pinking shears. Um, if you don't know what pinking shears are, oh, I can't, <laughs> I just tipped my camera over. Um, I can't get to them, but they're the ones with like the zigzag edge, okay? So it's got like the teeth that are like, ch -ch 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 -ch. you can cut all your fabric. I've done that before. When I have time, I will cut the edges and then it won't fray so much in the wash and the dry because um, then it kind of gets all wadded up and stuff, so. Okay, now it's crooked. Sorry, guys. <laughs> okay, okay, so there's that. Um, so now to, on to um, storage. So one of the things, let me show you this other cabinet. One of the things you have to know is how do you want to store your fabric? So how do you figure that out? Well, how do you use your fabric should tell you how to store your fabric. Um, so if you look in here, this is my probably most organized cabinet. Um, and as you can see, everything is pretty uniformly folded. Some of it's kind of fallen over cause I need to redo it. But, um, <clears throat> I try to fold them facing outward. So there's an, uh, a big flat edge on the outside. So it's like this, so I can see what the fabric is, right? Cause if you see it this way, sometimes it's harder to tell when it's all smashed and folded. If you got a nice edge here, I'm like, Oh, this is science girls fabric, right? Um, so I fold them this way. I'm going to show you how to do this. Um, and I all, I fold them all with a piece of cardboard. So they're all the same size. That way I can see, Hey, here it is. It fits in the stack. I know how many I've got. I organize mine typically by genre and then like kind of what it's for. So for example, down here, this whole row, that's all kind of pastel colors is all baby fabric, right? Baby blankets, stuffed animals, whatever. It's all kind of cutesy little like baby stuff, panels for quilts, whatever. Um, here, this is all video game. So we've got Super Mario Brothers, Legend of Zelda, Pokemon. That's pretty much it. <laughs> and uh, the bottom one's Doctor Who, so it shouldn't be in there. But that's normally how I do it, is I'll put it by genre. Um, you know, this is all kind of fruits and flowers. So there's like pears and apples and whatever. So um, I put them together by kind of type of fabric. Like, oh, you know, this is all science stuff. Like here's, um, yeah, these ones are Doctor Who, Star Trek, whatever, whatever. Okay. Because I know that that's how I work. I usually go, okay, today I'm going to do a bunch of Avenger stuff. So I'll just pull out all my Avenger stuff and I'll make bags and coffee sleeves and whatever. Um, that's kind of how I do it. You could also do it by color. Um, if you were so inclined. So again, if you're quilting, if you're using your fabric as, as like a quilting stash and you wanted to see what you had, sometimes by color is better because a lot of people will quilt by color. You know, even if they're not doing a monochromatic quilt, they're like, Hey, I want to use reds and browns cause I'm doing an autumn quilt. Okay. Where's my reds and browns? Bam, bam. Right. There's two stacks. Here's all the, what, whatever I have, ugh, whatever I have in red. Here's whatever I have in brown. So figure out how you use your fabric and then go from there. Right? Like I use my fabric by type all the time. Um, and then stack it together. So obviously I need to reorganize because as I got done, I just kind of stuffed some stuff back in here because that's kind of how it works. Like the hardest part of doing this is keeping up with it. So once you get it done the first time, you're like, you look at it and you're like, oh, it's amazing, right? But then as you pull stuff out to do projects, it gets messy again and you have to take time at least every two weeks or once a month, block out time to refold stuff and put it back. So what I'll do usually is I'll make a pile on the corner of my kind of cutting table. I have a big drafting table that I use to like roll stuff out and cut it. I'll make a pile there of like when I'm done with it, 
pile it, pile it, pile it, and then come back to it and fold it and put it away when I get time. Because sometimes I'm working, 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 working on making, 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 and I don't have time to just stop and do this. Because I, I work kind of like, so, 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 cut, 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 zipper, 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 zipper. <laughs> so it's kind of like a, an assembly line for me, and I just work well when I get into the groove. I don't have time for that. That'll, that'll still be here. It'll, it'll be here when I get back. So when you're done, make sure you make time. Schedule it into your schedule. Five minutes a day, if that's all you've got, come in, do five minutes of folding, put some stuff away, come back to it later, right? It's not the end of the world. It won't go anywhere. But as long as you can keep up with it, make yourself some time to do it, you can keep it like this, which makes it easier to work. Because if you can't find it, you can't use it. Um, that being said, let me show you something else. So, oh, here. Um, I don't know if you can see this. It might be too far over, but if you can see... I've got a stack of fabric behind a stack, stack of fabric. That is not the way to do this because now I can't see what I'm looking for. So if someone says, hey, I need a tanuki fabric, right? I need a little raccoon dog fabric. Well, I have some, but it's in this row behind this stack, which means if I'm looking for it, I'm gonna be pulling so much stuff out and making a big mess, and then I won't be able to find it. So right now it's that way because I just didn't have the room or the time to refold it so that way it would be a single stack in the front. So I'm going to refold probably all of this and reorganize so that way it'll only be one row. And some of these are smaller fabrics, so like they're, they're really like kind of scrap pieces. So for example, this little piece of Batman stuff is just scrap. This could be stored somewhere else because it doesn't fold really well. I mean, look at it. It's not even a, it's not even a rectangle. It's kind of like crazy wonky. So I do have um, a Tupperware that I use for scrap fabrics like this. So this should be moved out. That's what I'm saying is move this out of the way if you've got bigger pieces and then make like a box where you stack like you fold them smaller and then stack them in your scrap box so let me show you here so basically i have containers like this um i always do locking lid handles because i'll carry something like this down the stairs sometimes if i only have one hand i'm carrying whatever in this hand i'm carrying this um but i get these at target it's a sterilite container they always have a deal on cartwheel if you're looking um usually it's like 15 percent off so keep an eye out for a deal and then get yourself some of these because these are easy to throw under your desk under your chair under your well these ones may not fit under your bed they don't fit under mine my bed's too too low to the ground but in the bottom of your closet just somewhere because i will use these these are big enough to still make things out of right this fabric's not trash um what i do with small fabric that is too small to make something out of I save it in a paper bag and then um, so kind of I have like a trash can on one side that's a paper bag and then I have my scrap fabric side on the other side that's um, a paper bag and when that one's full I actually load it onto Craigslist and I just give it away for free and there's a lot of um, ladies who do quilting they'll do scrap quilts and they will make quilts that they give to charity, to babies in need, to veterans, to whoever, right? And so that makes me feel good because the fabric isn't wasted. And then somebody else is making something that goes to somebody who needs it. So that's kind of what I do with that. And then I have a separate bag for my, my fleece scraps. So I have sometimes like, you know, a little piece like this, this little piece of fleece. I might be able to use it for something, but it's pretty small. So I keep them all in kind of a plastic bag. So I do have a couple bags floating around my room that I kind of chase around the room. But um, this one you can hang on the, hang on the back of your door. Um, I save those because you can actually make dog toys out of them. So there's a way to kind of keep the waste down. Um, I try not to waste too much if possible. Um, but that you can stuff a dog toy, sew something out of scrap fabric and make a dog toy and give it to, you know, charity SPCA, give it to your dog. I have a dog, so she gets a lot of, uh, fleecy scrap and she likes picking all the little pieces out. So, um, okay. So storage, we talked about it. Now I'm going to show you guys the folding trick. So how to get this. Okay. Um, depending on your space, you have to decide how, how big do you want your sections? Okay. So for me, let's open this one. Cause I think you can see this one easier. Um, for me, I wanted three rows. Um, so one, two, three, basically in each thing, this one again, gobbledygook, but, um, what you could do is you measure the shelf, right? And you figure out how wide is your space and then divide that by three and then subtract maybe like an inch off of each one of those and make, make yourself a cardboard cutout. Um, I had to label it folding board. Do not toss. <laughs> because I just had all these little like random pieces of cardboard floating around my studio. And I was like, what is this? And I throw it away. They'd be like, oh, that was my folding one. Um, you can make it out of whatever, right? This is a cardboard. This is an Amazon box, right? We all order stuff from Amazon. Okay, I do. I don't know about all of us, but um, many of us probably do. Um, and this is just like a, a, like a piece of cardboard out of a print that I bought. So it was like the back of the, you know, this thing to keep it stiff in the little envelope. So you could make them out of whatever. So this one's slightly bigger. This one's slightly smaller. Again, use whatever works for you. Um, the depth 
So how far this goes into the cabinet does not matter as long as it fits in there because the way you fold the fabric will determine how the fabric fits. So this part doesn't matter. So let me show you. Let me grab here. We'll just grab this and I'll unfold it. Okay, so we got some Disney princesses, right? So say I pre-shrunk this, right? And I washed it. So now it's just a big, big piece of fabric. So now what do I do? So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to fold it in half and then fold it in half. Um, doesn't matter which direction you fold it in half first. Okay, so just fold it in half and then, and then fold it in half again. Okay, one way, then the other. Okay, then what you're going to do is you're going to take it and you're going to have it the long way this direction and the short way this direction. Okay, so long ways, horizontal, short way, vertical. And all you're going to do is take that little piece of cardboard that you made. And normally I would lay this out on the floor uh, or on my table. Okay, so you would lay it out and then you could just do it this way. So I'm going to show you guys standing up just because it's then when you can see what I'm doing. So you're just going to line it up to the edge of the fabric, right? And then all you're going to do is roll it up. And you're just going to keep that piece of fabric in the center. Okay. And then you're going to pull the, the, once you've got it all the way done, you're going to pull that piece of cardboard out and you're just going to fold this in half. That's it. And then there you go. It's got um, a, a kind of wider facing out portion that you can now stack perfectly on your stack and they all go together and they'll all be the same size. Um, the reason I said cut the cardboard a little smaller is if you cut it too big, fabric's going to stick out right as you fold it, it kind of pops out so you won't be able to fit it. The other thing is, is so here's where the, the depth this way, right, of the cardboard doesn't matter because if you have a piece of fabric that's much longer, say you had um, a 60 wide versus a 45 because this is, I think, a 45. Um, so it's going to be longer. So instead of folding in half, you just fold it in thirds, right? You just fold that end and then fold it and then it'll be shorter to fit in the cabinet. Now you don't want to fold it too short because if they're all this length, match the length of whatever the cabinet is. So that way you don't have a couple pieces that are short because then your stack won't, it'll be kind of wonky um, and the fabric won't sit as nice. And sometimes it'll fall forward out of the cabinet or fall backwards where you can't see it. So that's it. That's the, the easiest thing. Fold them all universal. And I know that sounds crazy. So if your fabric cabinet is a hot mess and it's folded all wonky, take the time, take it all out, fold it with the cardboard, get it to look like this. And you will love yourself later because it just makes it so much easier to get into, to use, to find. Like if you're trying to sew, like for me, I have a small business. That's what I do. It's my, my side hustle. Um, I, I need to be able to find things, especially if someone has a custom order and I know I have that fabric. I don't want to search for like 45 minutes for it. I could have had the project done in 45 minutes and then been watching TV with my son or playing outside or whatever. So make this easier on yourself. Plus, like I said, it's just, it's just nicer. It's easier to get to. It's nicer to look at, to use. Um, I did the system. I showed my mom how to do this and I went over her cabinets and by the way, her cabinets are like three times the size of my cabinets. They go floor to ceiling and they're about twice as wide and she has three of them and there's so much fabric and it took us a whole day to do it. Both of us doing it all day long. But then once it was done, she was like, Oh my gosh, it's so much better. Blah, blah, blah. She was so thrilled that like, Hey, we could have some kind of organizational system. And we did it with some of her other fabrics because she works with stuff that I don't work with. She works with Jersey. She works with silk. She works with crepe. I don't use any of that stuff. Mine's like 99% cotton and then like 1% other stuff, right? Like fleece. Um, every once in a while I'll have something fabric, fab, ugh, something fancy, but, um, that's it. So, um, I think that was all the things I said in my other video. Hopefully I covered it all. Um, again, if you have questions, send me a message. I'm totally willing to help. That's what I'm here for. This is why I'm sharing. I want you guys to be able to get organized, you know, store your fabric great, care for your fabrics. I'll answer whatever I can answer. Obviously, I am not a genius when it comes to this stuff. I just know what I know from experience and I'm willing to share it with you. So um, hopefully this video was helpful and you'll tune into my next one. Later, we're going to, uh, later today, I'm hoping I can record, we're going to check out some of my other organizational things in my studio to help you guys organize your own studio or your own house. It doesn't have to be your own studio space, right? Some of the things I do are helpful for anywhere in your house, right? Kitchen, living room, kids room, whatever. Okay. So we're going to, I'm going to look at labels and I'm going to talk about containers. So hopefully you'll tune in for that next time and I will see you guys later.